Show with Russ Mitchell, Tracy Smith, and Ira Jo Fisher. Coming to you from Fifth Avenue in New York City. Just ahead, why substance over style is key when you're looking to buy a car for a teenager. This is the Saturday Early Show on CBS. Thanks to attractive employee pricing discounts, nearly 2 million cars and trucks flew off dealership lots in July, and automakers are extending those discounts through Labor Day. So, faced with such good deals, what should parents consider when buying a car for a teenager? Craig Thor Kimlin, automotive consumer advocate, is here with some advice. Craig, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, you say when, when we consider a car, buying a car for our, our kids, there are other things we should consider as opposed to buying a car for ourselves. Other than fear, absolutely. <laughs> right. uh, you know, the needs are different for our children. The concerns are different. So you have to look at the transaction and the purchase a lot different, more differently than you would for your own vehicle. Gotcha. And we probably buy a nicer car for ourselves than we would for our kids. I think we, we agree on that. Well, in today's world, who knows? You know, kids get everything they want for some parents, so uh, maybe it's the opposite. You say look for substance over style. Kind of give me an idea what you mean by that. Sure. You know, we were all there at one time. You know, the sports car, the convertible, the fast car, the looks, the performance, and the style. That's what's important to kids today. But for parents, we're more concerned with safety, functions, economy, features features and warranty protection. Any cars out there that you find that have both that substance and style factor? You know, there's one manufacturer that has done an incredible job of marketing to youth, and that mm. is Honda. Mm. And the other one is Toyota. Toyota has come out with a brand called Scion, S-C-I-O-N, which is marketed particularly to young people to try to get young buyers into their dealerships and buying cars now, and hopefully keeping them as they become Toyota buyers and then Lexus buyers. Interesting. Now, now you say that if, if folks can, they should buy a new car for their teenager as opposed to a used car. Why? Absolutely. You know, things have changed in the last 20 years. The two A's that we're very concerned with, airbags and anti-lock brakes, are the most important features on today's vehicles. And they haven't been around that long. Now, true, about 10 years ago they came in vogue and they were required by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. However, there have been several generations of these products and safety features, and each one carries with it improvements. So a newer car will have these features, older cars won't. You're buying, let, let, let's say, do you recommend leasing? Is I never recommend leasing unless a business is paying the bill. Okay. And that's very specifically because tax reasons are the reasons why you lease, gotcha. not to save money each month. Because dealers find ways to pump up the price of these cars and the benefits that you're getting are less. Gotcha. As we said, a lot of used cars out there. Where, where did all these used cars come from? Uh, well, they're coming from a lot of places right now. You know, July was the biggest car sales month ever on record. Uh, with uh, the manufacturers and so there's a glut of used cars because a lot of people traded their vehicles in which means there's a lot of selection and with selection comes a drop in price typically because there's an oversupply uh, so there's used cars everywhere and there's so many to choose from that you don't have to pick one car and be stuck with it you can be very very picky you found this used car, okay? What are you looking for specifically? Well, first of all, what you want to look for in a used car is whether or not the vehicle has a warranty that still applies for the remainder of the time, hopefully, that you have the car. If the car is three years old and only comes with a three-year warranty, you're buying that car and the warranty's already expired. So you want to make sure there's warranty protection. If the car can be certified by the manufacturer to extend that warranty to 100,000 miles, perhaps, as some manufacturers will do, pay the extra money to get the car certified. I know there's some controversy about that right uh -huh. now but it will cut down on the repair expenses. And as we said, you, you know, the thing you want to avoid, obviously, in buying a used car is getting that lemon. You've mentioned a couple of these, but let's, let's talk about some of the things you can do to try to avoid doing this. Get a vehicle history report. Right. Always get a vehicle history report because that will tell you if the vehicle has been in an accident often. It will tell you what type of use that vehicle had, whether it was a rental car or a fleet vehicle and maybe subject to additional abuse, and whether or not the vehicle has had a salvage history or flood damage. As you said, ask about warranties and inspect the vehicle thoroughly. Take it somewhere? Have somebody else do it? Yes, absolutely. You know, we provide people help at LemonLaw.com. We call right. it Lemon Dodger. It's a sheet you can fill out to ask the right questions of people at a used car dealership to find out what the answer should be and whether or not to purchase that car. Gotcha. You've got a 15-year-old. I've got a 15-year-old. Boy, we'll, we'll commiserate at some point. We'll head down to the bar after this. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Thor Kimmel, thanks a lot. My pleasure. Take Thank you. Take care.